this paper is going to be looking at um, some archaeological projects that have targeted uh, young people with, from diverse backgrounds. Um, but it's also going to address the, sort of the main aim of this, of this session, which is um, using archaeology as a medium um, to educate young people and improve their life chances. Um, I should mention for this paper that in terms of the ages I'm looking at, it varies from school age all the way up to the age of 25. So that's quite a, a broad sort of age range that I'm looking at. Um, since I've been working in community archaeology, I, I kind of have this ethos, and it's um, archaeology should be inclusive rather than exclusive, and it's there for everyone. It's owned by everyone. And, um, but currently, the outside world has sort of this view of archaeology that's... Um, of, of the, it's a persona of archaeology of what we do, what we look like, who we are basically, which is, is just misleading. And we are getting better at, at sharing our archaeology and the knowledge that we gain from it. So my personal opinion of, arche of community archaeology is there's two parts to it. There's the community and there's the archaeology, and both of these should gain benefits from any project, any community project that you do. And um, when you consider that in regards to young people, the heritage outcomes and the reasons for providing these opportunities are quite simple, really. Um, for the archaeology, young people are the future of heritage, of heritage management, and by inspiring a sense of ownership, responsibility, and appreciation of heritage in, young, in the young, we are safeguarding and preserving the heritage in the future. And this might be as minimal as getting, getting them to acknowledge that they have a connection to a place. So it might be where they play football, they might walk past it when they go to school, they might live across the road from it, um, to something a bit more substantial, such as having a career in the heritage sector and working to protect and promote archaeology. For the young people uh, themselves, by providing young people with opportunities, experience and transferable skills, we can provide a better quality of life enhance understanding of different environments and cultures and enrich their future. And it's, it's an opportunity um, to learn new skills, make new friends and find a progressive career path, all of which are quite high on the agenda for young people when they're looking at their futures. And archaeology, I personally I think archaeology is, is a really good medium for teaching. Um, firstly because it's a multidisciplinary subject and it covers the science and the arts. And whenever I go into schools, I ask the kids uh, what their favourite subject is. And all the hands in the class shoot up. They all want to tell me what their favourite subjects are. And they always say maths, which you need for scale drawing and for, um, for calculating levels. You say sci they say science. Um, so there's osteology, there's scientific dating techniques. Um, art, so including re reconstruction, uh, drawing artefacts, those sorts of things. And religious studies as well learning about cultures and traditions that in the past and the present. It's also a vocational and hands-on. It's great for kinesthetic learners. I, I know I'm a kinesthetic learner. I can't sit for, <laughs> for a very long time <laughs> listening to things and watching things. But if I, you, they get me to do it, I understand it. And it's great for those kind of things. It, especially when in a museum now, nowadays, you've got all these artifacts behind, behind glass cases that people can't necessarily touch. And it provides them with transferable skills, um, which they can actively learn and use elsewhere. It's also easily accessible. And you have to remember, archaeology isn't just excavation. There's much more to it than that. Um, it's buildings, it's old maps, it's photographs, it's, and it's local. It's from war, uh, war memorials to ancient woodlands to infrastructure like canals and roads. Um, they're all archaeology, and most of it um, most of it is some part in everyday life, and a lot of it's actually free, which is brilliant. Why not use it? Uh, there's a topic for everyone as well. Uh, so many different time periods, cultures, site types, and locations to explore. And a lot of the time, there are topics that many non archaeologists don't necessarily consider, such as archaeobotany, ceramics, and uh, photography. And finally, I think the other thing it helps it helps with um, understanding current affairs. You can use archaeology for climate change with the rising sea levels, which is something I'm going to talk about my project later on, focuses on um, ecosystems and how statutory legislation affects wildlife and archaeology, as well as world politics, which I think is especially important at the moment with everything that's going on in Syria.
Uh, I'm going to be looking at three, uh, three examples, three case studies, um, which have, I've basically been involved in the last about three years, something like that, um, where I've been, we've engaged groups of people who might not have otherwise had the opportunity to be involved in archaeology. Uh, the first one of these is the My Place Project, which was run in schools in Bradford and Keighley, and it focused on a place which has a high population of young people with a, a population of, uh, of large ethnic minorities as well. Uh, the second is going to be focusing on another area with a high population of young, young people, but from a less affluent background. And this is the Leeds Young Archaeologist Club. Um, it, also, it will also look at Yak in regards to the group of people who have quite a large percentage um, of disabilities as well. And then finally, I'm going to be looking at Citizen, the Citizen Project, and how we're trying to get young people between the ages of 16 and 25 to um, get themselves more involved in community archaeology projects. So I'm going to start with My Place. Um, the My Place project was a two-year heritage lottery funded project. Um, uh, and it was a formal school project and was run from 2013 to 2014 um, by the education team at the West Yorkshire Joint Services in partnership with Bradford Council and um, particularly Bradford Museums. Uh, the archaeological excavation was led by Archaeological Services YAS and was, I was managing the second year of the project. It allowed kids to get involved with some excavation at the very, very end of it, and also some kids got a chance to do some geophysics. Um, the locations chosen for the site were two museums, one in Keighley called Cliff, Cliff Castle, and one in uh, Bradford called Bolling Hall, which are both in the Bradford Metropolitan District. The excavation took, um, took place over 11 days on each site. 10 days were, had between 3 and 60 children a day on those sites. Um, from 20 different schools, and the other day was set aside for the local community to get involved. Um, all the children were aged between 9 and 16 years in age, and there were mixed abilities. We had nurture groups, um, from nurture groups to gifted and talented, but we also had a group of um, ESOL students from one school. On my sites, the D word was banned. I did not want to hear anyone say they were digging for dinosaurs. <laughs> or diamonds. I got a lot of diamonds as well. <laughs> um, the aim of the project was Firstly, to increase the broadening participation in heritage of young children who are underrepresented. The Bradford Metropolitan District has the third highest number of young people, as those between 0 and 19, um, after Birmingham and Leeds. And a quarter of the district's population are under the age of 16. It's a massive, massive group of young people. So Bradford seemed like an ideal location to host a project like this. Um, in addition, in, uh, in 2011, one in four children in Bradford lived in poverty, or below the poverty line. Um, and so many of these children didn't interact with their local heritage, no matter how close it was to them. Secondly, by promoting community cohesion and integration from a diverse background using heritage and culture, the Bradford District has the highest population in England of um, people of Pakistani ethnic origin. It's got 20.3% of the population. And in the past, there has been, most of you probably know about the tensions that have happened between different communities in Bradford. So this project was aimed at creating a better communal unity between these groups. And finally, greater public involvement in the local planning and development issues, um, which in turn can affect heritage and safeguard it or neglect it. If you have a positive in interaction with heritage, it will mean better recognition and ownership from the local population. Um, so there was some successes here. This, enabled, this project enabled the young people to touch and interact with their heritage it allowed them to relate better to the places they were familiar with and, um, and their exciting heritage. And hopefully they will now use it as a heritage asset, not just somewhere where they play football or walk past when they go to school. And despite living close to the museum, many of these children hadn't done that before. So I think that was one positive success that came out. It enabled them to be part of something. Children love to be part of something. Um, and they want to contribute. And the children carried out all the excavation, found the artifacts, and some of them even helped me create the final archive report. As part of this, they had to work with each other to excavate, they had to wash the finds, they had to bag the finds. Um, and I think most of them, all of them, had a good experience. <laughs> from, the, from the evaluation we got back, they seemed to. And they had a good, having a good experience with her heritage and archaeology, um, and learning about the past and new skills, and having an enjoyable experience, all hopefully leads to the preservation of important archaeological sites and monuments for the future, from the future. Um, for me, the children who probably had um, 
who probably made the most of the day were the kids who don't necessarily interact or engage in classrooms and those who struggle with the learning in classrooms. For them, going outside and being vocational and doing hands-on stuff, they were the kids that really made it for me. Uh, the second case study is Leeds Young Archaeologist Group. This is my, my little group. This was our Christmas party where we all dressed up as people from the past, <laughs> which is quite exciting. And this was set up in 2014. Um, after a successful project involving local schools. It's, um, it's based in Milton Park, which is in South Leeds, and they had a Parks for People HLF project. And as part of that, they ran a schools project looking at the mining industry that was in the park. Um, it was originally set up by some archaeologists um, from Archaeological Services YAS with support from Leeds Council uh, and staff at Middleton Park and was converted into a yak once the funding from the HLF had been used up. Um, there are over 70, 70 branches, yak branches now, with over 600 volunteers. It's, it's a big, big network now. And they all have um, ad children between the ages of 8 and 16, with 16 to 18 year olds becoming young leaders. And it's a nationwide, and it's the only youth group which is focused specifically on archaeology. Um, the main aims of, of what I see as the Young Archaeologist Club are the ability to spark and maintain develop and grow this interest in archaeology that these children have. We allow the children to guide us on the topics they want to learn about, but in addition introduce them to aspects of archaeology they're unfamiliar with, such as geophysics, coastal archaeology and archaeozoology, uh, which is something more that I think Chloe's going to discuss later, hopefully, <laughs> so I won't get too much into it. Um, we want to create future advocates and long-term stewards for heritage by providing useful and a skilled workforce, and we want to them to enjoy um, heritage. Um, one of our key aims in the Leeds Young Archaeologists is to help facilitate and empower young people and more broadly the uh, motto for the Council of British Archaeology is Archaeology for All and the Council of British Archaeology it does this by making it inclusive for everyone and we've tried to sort of do this in many ways with our Young Archaeologist group. Uh, one of the reasons the club was established in the first place in, um, in that particular area to so break down barriers for children um, and get as many of them involved as possible. Um, to give you a bit of background, the Leeds Metropolitan District has the second highest population of young, uh, sorry, of young people between 0 and 19 years in England and one in five children in Leeds live, um, live in poverty. The most deprived communities are those in the inner east and the inner south, which is where our club is. And, um, and 20% of the population of these live in the 10 most deprived wards. In 2011, Middleton Park was ranked 209th nationally for the most deprived wards, and there are only four wards in Leeds that were ranked below it. And this means it falls into the 3% most deprived nationally. So it's, there's, not, there's not a lot of affluent people who live in this part of Leeds. The children with more affluent parents are going to be able to usually have better access to transport and more disposable income to be able to get them and the encouragement of parents to get them over to the club. So what we really wanted to do was, by putting it in Middleton Park, was make it open for those kids who have less disposable income, whose parents aren't as affluent, um, to be able to get there. Um, in addition, Yacht Clubs try to be inclusive and in the 2013 census, 17% of the members had additional needs. Um, disabilities or illness, and of those members, 40% had dyslexia, 18% were on the autistic spectrum, including Asperger's, and 14 had AD, ADD or ADHD. And we have several members in our club which are on the autism spectrum. Um, and we adapt our resources with members by having, we have additional leaders to help out um, with all members. We do a range of things with different types of learning. We do visual stuff, we do audi audible stuff, we do kinesthetic stuff from role plays to crafts to games to just having a go. We try and make it as friendly as possible. Uh, we enable them to interact with the heritage by con contributing to the archaeological research. For instance, last year we recorded a local war memorial on the data base. We provide them with an enjoyable experience in a safe and secure learning environment and provide a diverse learning experience for a, to a diverse, age group, uh, a diverse group of ages and abilities by enabling them to take responsibility and ownership of their club. We provide an ongoing and progressive experience for the children to be uh, to achieve. And I think this was highlighted this, this year when um, one of our young archaeologists won the Marsh Young Archaeologist of the, of the Year Award. He was 
one of our first members and he was actually originally took part in the school's group uh, the school's project that was um that was hosted in Middleton Park um, so we're very very proud of him <laughs> um, one interesting point noticed from the census which I think we noticed about leaders was um, the broad age range but actually um, most are between 20 and 30 with um, in 2013 70 to 24 year olds accounted for 14 percent of YAC volunteers which is quite significant really um, finally I'm going to go on to Citizen. This is the project I'm involved with at the moment. I am the community um, archaeologist for outreach in the north of England. Um, and Citizen stands for the Coastal and Intertidal Zone Archaeological Network, which is shot into Citizen, and it's a heritage lottery funded project. Um, we are working in partnership with the Museum of London, um, the National Trust, Crown Estate, there's lots of others, others such as the Council of British Archaeology and the Nautical um, Archaeological Society. Um, and we have three offices, one in the north, one in the southwest, and one in the southeast. And the aim of our project is, um, is to train communities and organisations on the coastlines to be able to identify, monitor and record archaeology that's at risk of erosion. Um, one of, our, um, one of our, our aims that the HLF has outlined is to try, to try and get more 16 to 25 year olds involved in our project. Um, and we've been targeting organisations that work with young people, not all of who have an experience in archaeology. So far we've worked with Girl Guides, Young Archaeologist Clubs, Duke of Edinburgh Volunteers, GCSE and A-level pupils, ArcSocks and university students from a range of subjects, including art, 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 oh, it's all the A's, art, art, architecture and archaeology. Um, <laughs> we haven't moved on to the B's yet. <laughs> um, by exploring um, structured groups of young people, it is a better way to get them involved in community projects. Many young people have busy lives, they have school to go to, college, university, they have homework associated with that, um, and especially the post-education group all have full-time jobs and busy social lives. And so we're targeting groups that they're already involved with to get involved with these projects, which we think is a, a, a better way to get them, to get them involved. Uh, the team in the the South East have worked with students from Brighton University, that's them on the top, um, as part of an elective course where they had 18 students, only two of whom were involved in a museum and heritage subject. Most were actually architecture students. Um, and they were looking at the landscape of Burning Gap and how the archaeology here has affected it. Uh, communi common, common, uh, comments that came out of um, the exercise like this was many felt a better connection to the landscape. Um, and it was great to see the story behind the foreshore. Three of them actually signed up to come, become to become citizen um, archaeologists and take part in further training events that we've got going on. Um, team North, who is which is my team, um, have created have targeted groups where the skills are transferable. So we've been working quite closely with organisations such as uh, the Duke of Edinburgh Volunteers and the Girl Guides, um, and particularly those on the coast in places like Filey and Cleethorpes. Um, so this is Cleve Arts here at the bottom. Um, and we had members of the Duke of Edinburgh volunteers help us record the submerged forest at Cleve Arts using handheld GPSs, um, cameras and recording forms. And this is an exercise we have done with older adult volunteers and they can do it just as well um, and quicker actually. <laughs> um, so though we're accessing young people, we're, through this we're accessing new people that may never have had the opportunity to get involved in a project like this. Um, we also have an app, I don't know how many of you saw Ollie's presentation on, the, on Wednesday, we also have an app coming out and it's amazing how many um, sort of teenagers eyes light up when you mention the word app. They go, oh really? Apps? <laughs> um, the other thing I, I'd quite like to mention is that um, we have been working with um, Badger and we've created our own training passport. Um, so he has, he has, uh, Badger has one, but we also have a citizen version, which anyone who takes part in our um, events, um, our training events, gets this um, for free, and it works as CPD, and it's great for young people because it gives them, it gives them something to be able to to evidence when they go to university, when they go for jobs, and that sort of thing. Um, so just to finish up, community um, archaeology projects are a better way of tap, um, are getting better at tapping into groups that they haven't been before. Um, we're still keeping those connections with the societies, the young archaeologist clubs and the universities 
Um, but we're also looking at group groups now, um, such as groups with disabilities, young offenders, charities like the Alzheimer's Society, uh, and groups like the WI and U3A. And the list goes on. And more and more community archaeology should be doing this. Um, they should be designing their projects to be more inclusive, making um, making them more attractive to the groups that wouldn't necessarily be involved and otherwise. The projects I've discussed obviously have their, have shortcomings and have failures, um, but they but they have begun addressing these um, and diversifying the future of, um, of community archaeology and archaeology in general when it comes to young people. Uh, one thing that I'd quite like to mention, I don't know how many of you were in the Adopt the Archaeology um, uh, session, um, with Alison James and she said when she was seven years old she met Rob Philpott um, and he took her around a Roman villa and that was uh, the turning point for her. For me when I was seven years old learning about the Romans I also met an archaeologist and decided from that point on I was going to be, be one. So I think it's really important that we're accessing these children and teaching them about education at such a young age because it can have an impact and if you think about all the archaeologists we've got here and two of us had that point at seven years old I think is really important. Um, so that's it. <laughs>